Welcome back to Think Tech. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Movies, Movies We Can Learn From. And today we're going to review George Kaysen, my co host, and me. Uh, we're going to review A Man Called Otto. This is an extraordinary movie, maybe the best thing that Tom Hanks has done. And he had done a lot of extraordinary movies, as you know. Well, George, uh, this has been a movie we have been waiting to review. Uh, I've seen this movie more than once. It is fascinating to me, and um, it is really remarkable. But before we start, I just want to tell you that on YouTube right now today, there is an interview between Ari Melber uh, and Tom Hanks. Um, And it's about, you know, Tom Hanks and all his movies and his approach to life. And I think that one comment he made, which stuck with me and still does, um, sort of explains his performance, his interpretation of this role. He said, no matter what, he will not take a role that calls for him to be cynical. He will not be cynical. And he says, no, he has always said no to movies that make that demand of him. This movie was not cynical at all. This movie was a, it was a beautiful thing, I thought. Uh, but let me ask you what, to tell our, our viewers, what, what's the environment of this movie? Who are we talking about? Where are we talking about? What is, what, what is going on in the neighborhood? Blue collar row house he's living in, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And he, he's just, in the movie, it shows his retirement. He was like a supervisor in a steel plant in, in, in Pittsburgh. And uh, he's recently lost his wife. She's passed away. So he's alone in the house, right? In the row house, right? And he's very unhappy. And, you know, we can get into the story of what happened to him and her, you know, before this. But he's not happy and he's contemplating suicide and he tries suicide a few times and luckily these this couple moves into the neighborhood and one of his neighbors hispanic couple and the wife is really happy and good-hearted and whatever and wants to make friends with the neighbor like we all you know want to make friends with our neighbors so he's attempting suicide number of times in the, in the movie and she there, always something comes up to prevent him from doing this. Three or four times he's trying to commit suicide because he really misses his wife who passed away. And they didn't have, they were going to have a kid. And then there was this very bad accident in Niagara Falls where she not only lost the child from miscarriage, but also she became paralyzed from the waist down. So, you know, she lived for a number of years. She still, she was still teaching school. In, in Pittsburgh, you know, so she, he still had his companion, companionship with him. But after he, she died, he also said in the movie, I, I forgot who he told it to, that there was nothing in my life before she came into my life, and there's nothing left in my life after she passed away. So there's nothing to live for. I mean, he just felt there's nothing to live for. So lo and behold, that's a term I use a lot, this Marisol, this Hispanic wife of the couple, she gets him to sort of think about life again, as even though his heart is dead, you know, and she's such a bubbly, bubbly person, you know, and her husband's a nice guy, you know. So the two of them sort of bring him back from, from wanting to commit suicide. And there's these other players, there's this other couple, an African-American couple, that he was very close with the husband, Ruben, you talk about silly things to break up a friendship. He likes Chevys and Ruben liked Fords and later bought a Toyota. So for this reason, I mean, talk about petty, petty stuff. So Otto doesn't like him anymore. But this, and then, and then also, Otto, because uh, the developers are buying up all the properties around this one street, right? So they're no, they can no longer get um, emergency vehicles like handy van in, into there. So they so so Sonia has a problem, you know, getting home and going to her school so she can teach, right? So so the, the 
the community association because he makes a big stink, right? Um, they replace him. And Rubens, it, I think Rubens sided with the others because he thought Otto was, you know, making a stink. So that their friendship broke up. So lo and behold, what happens again is as Otto starts to live life again and starts to think, you know, he's always concerned about other people, right? He's not, he's only con not concerned about himself. And one of the suicides he was going to do, I'm trying to think which of the three, I think it was the third one. This old man falls on the tracks, right? Otto was ready to jump in front of a train. <laughs> this old man falls on the tracks and Otto saved, goes down and saves the guy, you know, Pulls the gets the guy up back on the on the on the platform, right? And then the train's coming, and somebody throws gives him his hand, and Otto decides maybe he doesn't really want to die, so he he pulls him back, right? And and the other time he hangs this thing on his ceiling, right, and like a hook with a rope, right, on his ceiling, and he doesn't. It's not strong enough, and the the ceiling cracks and he falls, right. And right before that, he was in, um, I think, Home Depot asking for rope, you know, because he's going to hang himself, right? And he's because he's really curmudgeon, he's a good jerk, you know, he's, he's so angry at life. Sometimes I feel that way too, but I never abused the, the, the salespeople. So, so um, he, he's passed this pay so many dollars for per, per yard. You know, he's getting so many three and a half yards instead of four, and he's making a stink that he has she shouldn't pay for the full four yards so it's, it's it gets really really sort of slapstick comedy right and then when he falls from the ceiling he sees and he had newspaper on the floor i guess he figured he was going to bleed or he's really fastidious you know you're going to kill yourself why are you putting newspaper on the floor to protect your floor and when he's going to blood there's going to be blood on the floor so he sees this ad he falls into the ad for root for flowers so he sees the flowers and then he takes the flowers and he goes and sees his wife's grave and he's talking to her and then you know and and he starts talking about marisol these neighbors you know they're really nice <laughs> neighbors so this, this is like this is almost a comedy you know but the sadness that you know when i first read the, the initial reviews it, it talked about he was committing suicide so i really wasn't happy with that I don't like seeing sad movies or violence-filled movies, but this movie is really good because it's it's a comedy and at the same time there's some sad elements. So I can get into some of these other scenes, but I'll give you the, 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 the you know you you talk about some of the other scenes and I'll chime in. Really good movie, like the movie, but then we'll rate it at the end. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, I was touched. Not once, but many times during the movie. Because yes, I, I use the same term. He was a curmudgeon. He was also, a, a, you know, a broken man in many ways. He was a he was a, he was an engineer, thanks to his wife, uh, who was really really sweet in this movie. Uh, you get to meet her at little little moments of of uh, endearment in this movie, and. Um, and you understand why he misses her so much. He's he's kind of a narrow, curmudgeon individual. He's an engineer. He measures the rope. He doesn't need six feet of rope. Uh, you know, he needs five and a half feet of rope. And uh, he goes to the, uh, the cashier in the in the Home Depot store, and he says, "I don't want to pay for six feet of rope. What's the difference? It's thirty three cents. That's the difference. So what you have is you know these." The poor cashier doesn't know what to do. The manager, who is a young woman, doesn't know what to do. Um, and the people online with him, whether you know uh, they were sympathetic or just practical, are offering to pay the thirty-three cents if he'll please just move along. I mean, and you can say that's funny, but really, that's an example of what happens here. People wind up reaching out to him. He's the curmudgeon. Um, but he's got a kind of soft spot for people who reach out. He needs people to reach out. The same thing with the attempted suicide on the on the uh, train station. He's about to jump. This other fellow falls. He goes and saves him. And then what you have is all these people on the on the platform are reaching down to him to help him, and he can't resist that. He's looking for somebody to care for him. And um, I think that's an essential element in this movie. 
Tom Hanks has never played it quite this way. He is so powerful in this movie. He doesn't crack a smile. You know, you begin to learn about him. You know, I was I was thinking, you know, you don't meet the wife right away. You get little snapshots of how she courted him. There's one scene in a restaurant, I guess in Pittsburgh, where he doesn't, um, he buys, uh, he orders just soup for himself. And, and she's sitting there with a steak and an entree. And she says to him, Otto, how come, you know, you don't, you don't have an entree, you just have soup. Then he lies. He says, I, I ate at home. Which, but she is a smart woman, and she knows immediately that he doesn't have the money to buy an entree for himself. Um, and she, she calls him out on it, and he says, well, I, I'm sorry, I lied to you, I have to go now. And, you know, he's embarrassed. And he turns to leave. He grabs his hand. And in the middle of this restaurant, he gives them a deep, wounding kiss. This is the way their courtship got serious. And the people in the restaurant applauded. Um, and, and that was so touching. What I get out of this is it's an American story. It's a middle-class person with a middle-class family, middle-class neighbors, had a middle-class job, middle-class college degree. Um, and. And we learn about him. We, we see the insides of him. We see how he reacts to things, where he is in the world. Uh, we see him deal with all these you know, things that are unpleasant and challenging and so forth. Um, I, never, I never saw Tom Hanks do a job like this before. Um, the, the, some people think that, that Marisol character, sort of a short, fat, pregnant, um, she was. She's. She wasn't Mexican. She was uh, uh, El Salvador. She admitted, you know, which is different. And uh, <clears throat> she's the one who woke him up. She's the one who gave him um, unconditional love. And she's the one who brought him out of his uh, doldrums. And she is really a star in the movie. The two of them together made that movie. She. She, you will see her again, Marisol. And all the characters in the movie, there, there are maybe six characters in the whole movie. That's it. And they all play really important roles. You know, her husband, who was a, a bit of a stunk, and, you know, <laughs> this great scene. He says, can I borrow your ladder, Otto? And why do you want to borrow the ladder? Because I, the window won't open. And Otto says, um, have you tried tr opening it from the inside? Why do you? <laughs> anyway, there are really wonderful one-liners in there, all delivered straight face, all delivered dead serious by a curmudgeon, and and so you you know you get uh, this kind of warm and fuzzy thing about how people care for each other on this closed block, which uh, Otto enforces that you can't drive on this block. This block is reserved. We have to follow the rules. Then what, what is really happening is, you know, these six people are interacting with each other. These people are in a, their own way, their, their own community, their own neighborhood, their own family, their family. And they replace his lost wife. They replace his family. And, um, you know, for that, for that reason, you, you see that interaction and you say, wow, this is, you know, but for the grace um, this could happen to anybody in the country. It's an American story. Um, I, I could go on, but I, I love this movie, not only because of him. At first, I didn't recognize him with the makeup and all that. And, and when he appeared with Ari Melber, um, what was interesting is he looked more like Otto than he did like the Tom Hanks, the you know, teenage-looking Tom Hanks that we know. Um, it's hard you know, to recognize him in this movie. But anyway, I would say this is probably the best, most incisive uh, statement. When he was being interviewed by uh, Ari Melber, you, you, he didn't talk politics, but then he did talk politics. And he was talking about, you know, not being cynical. He was talking about a better country for a better world. And in fact, we find that uh, Tom Hanks has made commercials for Barack Obama and I think Joe Biden, too. Um, so he does have a political consciousness, and he doesn't like Trump too much. 
Um, and so he's, he's, a, he's a member of the, of the national community. And this is his contribution. His movies are all his contribution to how we should live better together. And that was the essence of this movie, Otto. Um, we should all live better together. There's no reason why we can't love each other and be loved. Wow, what a movie. Not, no violence. Well, there's one scene where he, where he pushed a clown around. That was pretty funny. He, a hospital clown. He got mad at him and pushed him. <laughs> but aside from that, this was not violence or vengeance or negative or cynical. This was about love among strangers who came together and cared about each other. It's, it's like, you know, if we could all live like this, it would be a better time. Okay, your turn. I remember Rodney King back in L.A. when they had the riots. I think it was 92. He said, can't we all just get along? I don't know if you remember Rodney King with that mm. incident. But getting back to the movie, how they met is his wife, Sonia. She was going to get on a train. She was running to the train to get on the train. And she was reading this book. I don't know. It was a novel or whatever. And she dropped the book, and he saw this. So he was a caring person, even in his young days. And the younger version of Otto is played by Tom Hanks' son, so which is really, I found that interesting. And he runs, and he runs and gets on the train that she got on just as it's pulling away. And then he's going to the seats. He's got the book in his hand, and he finds her and shows her the book. Right, and she's so happy that you know that. He brought the book to her, right? And, and uh, so she asks him to sit with her, right? And then when the conductor comes, takes her ticket, and then his ticket is for a different train. So the conductor says, you're on the wrong train. So right away, she knew that he really sort of likes her, maybe, you know? That he, but he's, you know so, and this is how their relationship started. Now, another scene is that to get into the, into the military, right? Oh, don't forget, he did not have enough money in his pocket. Remember, he had been rejected by the army for having the medical term, I forgot. But the, the problem was he a big heart, an oversized, a large heart. The army rejected him. He had no job and he did, had no money um, and he had no degree, nothing. He was you know, completely bereft. And she saw that he couldn't afford the ticket to go where she was going. And it was like $2. I mean, this is 1980 or so, $2. So she, he's short by like, like 75 cents. Yeah. <laughs> and and he, she gives him the money necessary to buy the ticket to go where she's going. And she gave him one 1964 silver quarter too much. And when he attempted to return it to her, she said no. And that silver quarter plays a role yes. in, throughout this movie. Exactly. W when was it that he got angry because someone gave him, oh, the clown, that was the clown. The clown didn't give him back the same quarter that he had given him. And that quarter had sentimental value for Otto. So kept he kept it with him all the time. And the clown didn't. Yeah, the clown did not understand. And, and, and because, you know, sometimes people don't understand where you're coming from, right? Because it's, they're blind to that, right? What your experiences have been. So, so bottom line is, he, that's why he got angry at the clown, because he wanted that same quarter. And this clown says, I'm giving you a quarter. What does it matter which quarter? That quarter was the quarter that Sonia had given them that started their relationship. And yes, the military thing, um, they had rejected him because of a big heart. I forget. I forgot the military. Well, yeah, but you know the, the the interesting thing is it's a clown. This is a clown, and you know the movie is telling us something. You know sometimes clowns do the wrong thing, um, and and you can't tolerate a clown who isn't funny. Um, and uh, and there was a message there. I would have to sit and think about what it was. There were so many messages, and in the end, you haven't mentioned in the end what happened to. He does not die of all his attempts at suicide. No. Um, he survives every single one of them. But exactly. one day, Marisol finds him, sadly, 
uh, lying dead with his with his cat, his yeah. cat that was the only person in his house. He had a lot of trouble accepting a cat in his house, but um, with his cat on his bed, and he died of a, a heart that was too big. Think yeah. about that. Were they, were they telling us some? This is fiction. They're right. telling us that the guy had a heart that was too big. That's so you hit the point. I mean, talk about play on words, you know, that his heart was too small and then it became, well, no, even his whole life, his heart was pretty big. His, I mean, from an emotional standpoint, but the play on words about the physically, biologically, the heart's too big. So a lot of sort of subtle things being, as you just said, subtle, little subtle things going on here as well. That's but, why I watched the movie twice, actually, because I thought I missed a lot. Now, for example, Marisol, was it Marisol or somebody, some other character in the movie uh, is in his kitchen. And she says, uh, gee, um, your counters are so low. I don't know if you caught that. Your counters are so, why are your counters so low? I, did, did you, did you, were they like that? Did you build them? What happened? And he makes some flat, flat effect statement. He says, no, I, I built them. I'm, I'm handy. And he is, he can do anything. Um, and you realize afterward it was because his wife was in a wheelchair. So he rebuilt the kitchen because she was a good cook and, and he, he wanted to make her life as comfortable. You know, and, and although you don't meet the young man, Tom Hanks' son, or um, Tom Hanks' uh, wife very much in the movie, the love affair between them is so powerful. And his reaction without her, you know, is so powerful that it's like an, an overwhelming romance. It is so uh, profound. Uh, so, uh, you know, all the touch points of, um, of his life, this fictitious character becomes real. It, it's almost like at the end of the movie, especially if you watch it twice, um, he's real. It's a real person. And you are familiar with so many of his, you know, the 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 benchmarks of his life, his relationship with with uh, Sonia, his uh, relationship with um, Marisol and Marisol's family. You know, these are like real people, and I, I, I don't know why, but it touched me so much. I mean, if the, all those things with Sonia, and with his the younger him, were all flashbacks. Usually when he was ready to commit suicide, you know, when he fell from the ceiling or or in another. I mean, it, it was always yeah. some crisis. Don't, don't forget the gas in the car. Yeah, exactly. He, he, he yeah, put a garden hose into his car. Marisol saved him by because her husband fell off the ladder and had to get, had to get him to the thing. Now, we can talk a little bit about the end, too. Before he dies, a few years before. He gives his car to this uh, transsexual kid that was a student of Sonia's, right? And and the kid is like, for, you know, because he also had helped this kid uh, um, fix his bicycle because Sonia was very accepting of this uh, transsexual kid. And then he buys a truck, this big truck, you know, like these people here, these some of these people have these huge trucks. and And then he gives the truck to Marisol and her husband. He gives that truck to them, right? But no, after he dies, he, he leaves a will of some kind. Right. And he, and he disposes of his property, his house, his, his car, um, and other things of value, including his cat, yeah. and to these people. And, you know, and you, you get to see the man so clearly, more clearly, when you see what he did after his life was over, um, how he gave his things away and made these very sensitive choices about who would get what. Exactly. Precisely, you know? So there's so many issues here that being, I'm blind in one eye. I went to the military. I was rejected. So I understood his situation there as well. You oh, know? I think you have a big heart also, George. Well, I try. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, so, Jay, um, how do you feel about this movie? Uh, in terms of rating it, what is your rating? Oh, I would give it the highest possible rating because it touched me, and not once but twice. It um, it it made uh, 
Tom Hanks a permanent fixture in my way, my look, my view of the world. Uh, it made this character a statement of not necessarily the America that we have, but the America that we want. Um, it was a, a statement of life in Pittsburgh, life in the middle class, life with um, a diverse group of people. And I, I think that's one of the big messages here. These people were diverse. You know, you get the trans kid. Um, you got the black family with whom he was friendly always. I mean, until they had a silly argument. You got the uh, homeowners association, which was out of its mind. Um, you got the developer who was greedy. Um, you, and you got Marisol, who was, uh, um, you know, 10 feet tall. I mean, all these people are icons in, in America and furthermore in the America we want to have. I mean, the diversity played a big role. Here's a guy who was saved by a woman from El Salvador. Saved. Um, he would have committed suicide a number of times were it not for him. And she understood. She understood all about him. She brought him out of it. It was love between them, even though she was married. Um, so, um, yeah, I, I saw it as uh, what Tom Hanks would do, um, given his discussion and, and the answers he provided to Ari Melber's questions in this extraordinary interview. He's a very smart guy, very ethical, moral, cogent thinker. And this movie reflected him. I, um, he must have been involved in the writing. He must have been involved in the direction. Um, this is all about Tom Hanks, but, but he's modest about it. It's not like he's blowing his own horn or presenting his own family. Um, he was presenting his view of the country. I give it a 10 to 10 plus, if I can give it a 10 plus. Very, very good movie. And one of the things we didn't discuss, I'll make it quick. He saves uh, Anita and Ruben, the, the black couple, was going to be evicted by their son who had played legal games. And he got in because of his ability, legal ability, and he saved their place that Ruben and his wife could stay in their house where they've lived for years. So that was another factor. But I'll give it everything you said I agree with. Um, very, very good movie hanks tom hanks played this thing superb yeah we need more movies like that you know i mean if you if you look through it you find what his motivation was and his motivation was not to show us violence and vengeance and shoot ups or anything like that or hate or bigotry he was really the opposite of all that he was trying to give us a a uh, a, a 50,000 foot message i think and uh, this movie is going to be a classic and i and i think that we need more movies like this i wish i could find a lot more movies like this with very talented actors directors um who can send a message like this to have us understand our neighbors and our society it's like you know so often in the shows we do on the American condition, American issues, we wind up, you know, in the, like the ever ready battery, battery in the corner of the room with no answers, no solutions, uh, only expectations for worse. Um, and so when an actor, uh, you know, who is so thoughtful does a movie like this, you say, this is the kind of thing that can actually make life in these United States better. If people would watch it, understand it, appreciate all its various messages. Um, unfortunately, there aren't all, enough of these movies. But at least we can appreciate it, George, you and me, and we can talk about it, and we can urge other people to see it uh, and gain, gain those messages. Um, it was uh, uplifting. That's what it was. That's why I'm with you. It, it's 10 plus. That's what it is. Yeah, I would urge people to take a look. It, it just came out recently, so I would urge them as well to. to take yeah, a look. and don't be put off by the, you know, the, the cautionary um, notice at the beginning of the film, which says this film has multiple instances of um, attempts at suicide. Um, you know um, that you know not not everybody will like that, but the fact is that it was. 
It was about that. It was about suicide. And it was this treatment of suicide and all these very difficult issues we are faced with in our lives. And so there's another message there. It's a message of, of being a senior and getting old um, and suffering through uh, the challenges that seniors uh, suffer through. And the notion of losing, you know, the, the great love of your life, which clearly that was the case for him. Um, and so um, th th there were messages on so many levels that we could go on, but we won't because we got to go. Uh, George, let me let me say I, I really appreciate you looking at this one. I appreciate your comments about it, yes, and uh, uh, let's look for more like this one. Your your comments excellent too. Yeah, two weeks from now we'll get back with another movie. Thank you, George. Thank you, Jay. Uh, aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.